Spirit, our God, reveal the risen Christ to us today. Just as Jesus explained the scriptures and revealed himself to the disciples at Emmaus, enlighten our minds to understand their witness and open the eyes of our spirits to see all you wish to show us. Amen. is Psalms 116, Thanksgiving for Recovery from Illness. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he's inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death composed me. The pangs of Shiloh laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord? For all his bounty to me, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. For the word of God and scripture. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is Acts chapter 2, 14a. 36 through 38. Pete addresses, Peter addresses the crowd. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know that with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus you, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were, out, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the word of God among us. Thanks be to God. A reading now from the Gospel, reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24. We're going to do two parts of the story the beginning and then uh, skip to the end in verse 25. Now, on that same day, two of them were going uh, to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from seeing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood as still, looking sad. Let's see. And then verse 25. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us, for the word of God within us. Praise to you, Lord. I want to tell you a story about John. John had a really good job, a job he really enjoyed and found a lot of fulfillment in. 
He intended to stay in it, advancing as far as he could uh, with the company that he worked for for the rest of his career. But 20 years in, his longtime supervisor retired, and they hired a new supervisor who came in and wanted to, as they say, clean house and make it clear that there was a new sheriff in town. John did his best to go along, to get along, but the new supervisor had targeted him from the get-go. So John kept being assigned tasks that he didn't know how to do, that were not really even a part of his job description. He was put in positions to fail, and fail he did. It wasn't long before the handwriting was on the wall, and he was called into the office, fired for cause, unceremoniously kicked to the curb. Maybe you've been in a similar situation, or maybe someone close to you has. It's a tough spot. These are the kind of circumstances that alter the course of your life, that make you change. You have to, you have no other choice. Your long-term plans. And you feel in this moment like you have to start over when you're at an age in a place in your career when you never thought in a million years that you, were, that you would have to do such a thing. Getting fired in such a ridiculous way doesn't look or feel like a blessing. John sulked for a few weeks and then decided to go on a Caribbean cruise. Now that right there, that'll cure what ails you. It is very hard, I think, to go on being sad when you're on the back of a jet ski. So John jet skied. He ate good food. He drank by the pool, even in the pool, at those poolside bars they have on those cruise ships. And in his delightful convalescence, he found his inner resolve once again. By the time he came back home, he felt that he was ready now to start over. He searched for jobs in his field and found several companies hiring people with his expertise and experience and started putting in applications. Two months later, only two months, in a handful of interviews later, he was hired at a new company in a position that for him represented a promotion with a generous compensation package that paid him 50% more than what he was making at his previous job, and with better benefits too. And the kicker now to this whole ordeal, the company that John had been working for, the one he worked for for 20 years, started laying people off en masse not long after John was fired. And only a few years later, that company declared bankruptcy and began the process of shutting its doors altogether. John hadn't known, he hadn't seen how imminent this was when he worked there. But at his new company, things were going well, the company seemed to be thriving, and he felt secure and happy in his new job in a way that he hadn't, even when things were good at his old job. It turned out that for John, getting fired from a job that he truly enjoyed and found fulfillment in was the best thing that could have happened to him. But he didn't know it at first. The firing was a gift because the only way that he was going to find his way out of there was if he got fired. That's what he needed. And that, fortunately for him, is exactly what happened. Now, what we have just considered, people of God, is an example of a blessing in disguise. It shows us how spiritual things are often wearing disguises when we first encounter them, like the disguise that Jesus seemed to be wearing when he met the disciples on the road to Emmaus. The things of the Spirit often present themselves to us in ways that make them harder to recognize. 
Why do you think that is? I mean, getting kicked to the curb the way that John did, without so much as a goodbye, after 20 years of pouring his heart and his soul into that place, as bad as it felt, this was always, always a blessing. That was the truth of it from the beginning. It was always going to net him a blessing in his life. God knew that. The universe knew that. His family and his friends knew that. It seems like he was the only one who didn't. I mean, classic John, right? Always late to the party. But he found his way eventually. This phenomenon that we're talking about here, where we just don't recognize these things at first, it occurs regularly in our lives as well. But as much as John's example provides us with an example and a definition of a blessing in disguise, it is also an example that I think helps us to understand the nature of these disguises. Now, since this event that happened to John where he was fired, by nature, possessed the properties of being a blessing, a, a gift, if you will, from the capital L love that fills the universe, that was given to him in love, he could, it was possible, he could have perceived it as such immediately. If he'd been able to separate himself from the visceral emotional reaction that he experienced, if he'd been able to quiet his bruised ego, if he'd been able to let go of the attachment that he felt to his best laid plans and simply perceive this course of events for what they truly were from the outset, he would have been able to recognize this occurrence as a blessing the moment it happened. But his emotions, his ego, and his attachments kept him from seeing it. They prevented him from perceiving the truth of his situation. It turns out then that the disguise that this blessing wore was a disguise that was placed upon it by his own heart and his own mind. And it was not until he overcame his tumultuous emotions and quieted his ego and let go of his plans that he was able to see that what happened to him was a blessing all along. But hang on, Pastor Bradley, you might be saying. The, the situation you're talking about makes all of this obvious. What if it's not so obvious in my life? How could I discern that something like this was going on with me if that were the case? And if that was the question you had in your mind, good question. I'm so glad you asked. That's going to help me really move this, uh, move this along. We can always, at any given moment in our lives, ascertain the state of our spirits and our psyches by looking at one thing. And that is the fire in our hearts. Our zest, our zeal, our passion, our joy. Everyone experiences this, I think, a little bit differently, but we all understand what it is because it's an integral part of the human experience. Now, for some people, their fire went out a long time ago, and they've been living without it. For others, it burns hot into their 80s and even their 90s. If ever you are interested in knowing the condition of your spirit, whether you are seeing things as they are or not. Just look at the fire in your heart. Now for John, the fire in his heart went out, ironically, when he was fired. It was extinguished by tough circumstances and overwhelming internal movements. He needed for this fire to be reignited so that his zest for life and his passion for his profession and his belief in himself could be restored. He needed to find within himself the energy 
the resolve, the impetus to see things clearly and then do what needed to be done. Perhaps then, if I may be so bold as to suggest this, even if nothing as traumatic as being fired the way that John was has happened to you, you might realize when you examine it that your fire is out all the same. It's really not hard to, to see when you're being honest. Are the fruits of the Spirit being born in you? Is your love expanding? Are you experiencing joy regularly? Are you at peace, truly? Are you at peace? This assessment does require a bit of a gut check. And it can be gut-wrenching to realize that, yes, that fire is gone. Now, if that's you, I want you to understand today that the eyes of your heart, your spiritual eyes, are not seeing when you're in that condition. Your emotions are out of balance. Your ego now is driving. Your attachments are limiting you. Jesus himself could be right in front of you, just like he was in front of those disciples, and you wouldn't know it. If you want to perceive the truth of your situation, if you want to recognize the blessings in disguise, if you want for your eyes to be open in the same way that John's eyes were opened, the same way that the Emmaus disciples' eyes were opened, this is what it comes down to. You've got to get that fire in your heart going again. Now this happens in two phases, and they can occur simultaneously, especially if you have access to a jet ski. Phase one is letting go. There's nothing for it. We will need to let go of the pain that holds us back. We'll need to let go of and thereby reject the dictates of our inflamed egos. And we will need to let go of the attachments and expectations that keep our perceptions fenced in and our eyes closed. Phase two then, moving on. Do something that gets you out of the rut that you've been in, that breaks the cycles that you wish would change. These things are not going to change on their own. You have to take steps to change them intentionally. Shift away from the ordinary, from the expected, so that you can see things from another perspective. Make it a point to spend time and energy around people and doing things that give life to your soul. And that fire will find itself reignited once again. Let go and move on. And then the fire in your heart will burn hot once more and your spiritual eyes will be opened to recognize the blessings that are just inherent and full in your life already. And you might even catch a glimpse of the risen Christ because he's been walking with you all the way along. His presence and power and love have never and will never leave you nor forsake you. Behold, he is with you, even until the end of the age. Amen. And thanks be to God. Our homily hymn now is number 451, Be Now My Vision.
come now to the blessing of our gifts, I thought that we might try it after the sermon this week because it's been pointed out to me several times that the gifts that we offer, we do offer in worship as a response to the movement of the Spirit among us and in our hearts. We don't put the offering plate under your nose, you know where it is, but the gifts that we offer, we offer because we know that the things that we believe are really real. It's not empty movements and empty words and empty worship. It's full of life. So let us now bless those gifts together. Risen Lord, like the disciples at Emmaus, we offer what we have. They offered their company, their table, and their bread. We invite to you to be with us, Jesus as we offer you our gifts. May our eyes be opened to your holy presence among us, now and always. Receive our gifts, O God, and bless them, we pray. May they speed the coming of your kingdom in our community. Amen. We come now to the prayers of the people. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Uh, we begin, as always, with our joys. Prayers of joy for Dick's birthday. I don't see Anne in the room, but I'm guessing Dick's now about, what, like 49, you guys? 49, you guys think? 49 again? That's something. Happy birthday to Dick. And then prayers of joy also for... Uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants musical and the talented kids that are putting it on. Uh, I assume that's your grandkids? Well, yeah, I mean, by twice removed, yeah, yeah. Wonderful young people. <laughs> well, prayers of joy, yes, uh, that we share with Lauren for that show. Uh, we offer prayers for those who are dealing with uh, various illnesses and ailments. We think of Tina today, who is uh, due for sur uh, another surgery. Pray for her. We think of Linda, who is ill. And we think of Pat, who is awaiting biopsy results. Let us pray for those folks. Gracious God, we lift up Tina and Linda and Pat to you today. And we ask for their health and their well being. We ask that where there is a surgery, that it would be an absolute success, that the, the prognosis would be amazing afterward, that the, re the recovery time would be shorter than what was thought, and that you would help there to be a minimum of pain and for it to be managed. For, for Linda, who is ill, Lord, we pray that you would raise her under her feet and grant her health, we pray. And for Pat, Gracious God, regardless of, of what those results are, we pray that your strength would be with her, that you would break the bread of your presence in her heart and in her mind so that she might know with her inner man, her inner self, that you are with her, come what may. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray today for those who are dealing with a lot of stress. We lift up Lynn, Gary, Larry, Matthew, Nicole, and family, and also Julie. Gracious God, we lift up those folks to you. And we pray for them, that very peace that we've spoken of today peace that is born in our hearts by the movement and the ministry of your spirit. That peace that is able to reach us in the middle of any storm that passes all understanding. We pray that 
for each one who we've named, that you would reach them where they are, that you would bear out your peace in their lives, and that you would deliver them from the stresses that they are in. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we lift up today uh, the, the Booth family in the death of faith. So gracious God, we, we do pray for the Booth family and all who are grieving the loss of faith. And we pray that for each one who is dealing with, with that grief today, that you would be near to their hearts, that you would grant them comfort, that you would be with them as they go through the process that, that looks so different for each of us. And that in their grief, Lord, that they would find each other. Grant that the comfort that you wish for them would be given and granted through the people around them who are going through the same things. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And then finally, we want to lift up uh, all the things that are going on in our country right now uh, regarding gun safety and violence. That's, that's on my list to pray for here. Gracious God, we put before you something that, that's a, a very big issue and one that seems unsolvable due to the, the political climate in, in our nation. But we ask, Lord, that you would prevail upon hearts and minds to do what seems obviously right, what seems like common sense, which is to regulate and put controls and limits on our guns. We pray that for everyone who feels so deeply attached to those things that they are not willing even to consider the safety of others, the safety of children in schools even, that you would prevail upon their hearts to see the greater good. May it be so, according to your will, we pray in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now we pray together with the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn now is number 606, Nearer My God to You.
standing now in body or spirit for our benediction. May God bless your eyes and be in your seeing. God comes to us in things that are in the world, but not of it. May Christ bless your eyes and widen your gaze. Christ is before our very eyes, May Spirit bless your eyes and to sharpen your vision. May the sacred three bless your eyes and cause you to see. May the three that are one become God to us. Now our service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.